Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to write an outline. When I first started teaching high school, I was so surprised at how many students were confused of what an outline was. I would say, all right, I need you to write an outline. They're like, great, we know what an outline is. And then they would start like making a bubble web. They're like, see, this is what we do. It's like, no, that's, that's not an outline at all. That's, that's brainstorming. And they're like, okay. And so I would teach them how to outline. Outlining is not the same as brainstorming. Brainstorming is so important, right? It's the step where you figure out what your ideas are. So important. Outlining is when you take your ideas and you put them in order. And by putting them in order, you're figuring out what you're gonna focus on and what you're not gonna focus on. You're also gonna figure out what your big ideas are and how your ideas arrange and work and match together so that you can say what you want to say. So many people skip over this step because they're like, eh, no one's going to see. How's the teacher going to know? It's so boring, it takes extra time, it's too much work. What they don't get is that this will save you time. It will make a better paper, whatever it is you're writing. It's going to be better because you took time to figure out what you were going to say before you said it. Let's go. Let's talk about how to write an outline. You've probably seen something like this. Um, today we're gonna learn how to write a, a five paragraph essay. Great, we know that one. One, we've gotta have our introduction, right? Intro, introduction. Two, you're gonna have the body where you talk about stuff. And then three, you're gonna have your conclusion. Great, I did all three of those. Now I'm ready to write a paper. Eh, maybe you can do a little bit more, make it better. Yeah, this isn't bad, it's just mm, could be better. So, I'm going to show you two kinds of outlines. One is good, and then maybe later in the semester we'll get better. One. Oh, this sounds familiar. I wrote introduction. Yes, you do want to start with an introduction because you want to make sure whatever it is you're talking about, that the people you're talking to are on the same page with you. They know what you're talking about, so you're going to give them everything they need to know so that they can understand you. Make sense? The kinds of things you put in your introduction are, well, you set it up, right? If you're talking about a problem, set up. If you're talking about a problem, you're gonna explain the problem. But what you're doing is you're building up to what you have to say, which is your thesis. It's the main point that you're trying to make. Your thesis is your main idea. And it probably needs to look something like this. He uses this formula, topic plus comment. What does that look like? Well, you identify the topic, then you make a comment about it. This is really important. You have to make a comment or else people are like, ah, what? It's the so what question that people will automatically say. If you're reading something for entertainment, that's the so what, right? Why am I doing this? What's the reason for it? Oh, well, you know, I'm interested in the story. Great, I ask so what? And the answer is, oh, good, it'll be fun. Great. But when you're writing an essay, your job is to make a point. It's to be maybe persuasive or informative. And as you make that point, you get to tell them the so what. This is why they should care about your paper. The comment has to be debatable. It has to be something that someone could disagree with. Because if you're saying something that no one disagrees with, you're bordering on a fact instead of a comment and you can interpret facts differently, but you don't really debate them. And it's kind of like, well, so what? Why'd you tell me this fact? Is this what I had to read this for? No. So let me give you an example. This is what I always say. Here's two examples between a fact and a, a debatable thesis statement. On Sunday, December 7th, 1941, the Empire of Japan attacked the American Navy at Pearl Harbor. That's a fact, right? It's a very specific fact, but it's not debatable. You can't say well, like, well, I don't, I don't think it really happened. No, no, it did. Like we just have too much evidence saying, boom, it happened. It's also something that just about everybody knows, right? It happened. It's not something you argue and a paper is like, well, it really was a Sunday and it really was December 7th. No, that's not debatable. That's not an argument. What is an argument is if you say something like this. On December 7th, 1941, Japan attacked America at Pearl Harbor and it could have been avoided. That's what makes it debatable. You've made a comment. 
you said the topic, which was everything about Pearl Harbor, and the comment was, and it could have been avoided. Now it's debatable. Now the rest of your paper is trying to prove that comment, which is why you need to know what your thesis is when you write a paper, because if you don't, what's your purpose? You don't know. Your purpose in an essay is to prove or to justify your thesis statement. I'm gonna say that again. Your purpose in an essay is to prove or justify your thesis statement. So, if you don't have a thesis statement, what are you trying to do? Make sense? Okay, so, your introduction then is building up to your thesis. You're gonna introduce, you're gonna set up what people need to know so that they can, they are ready to hear you make your point and they're like, oh yeah, that's, what, that's a good point, right? And then you follow it up with your body which could be, you know, 10 paragraphs, it could be 100 paragraphs, where you, bit by bit, you go back and you explain parts of your thesis, right? So if your thesis is, and there's three ways it could have been avoided, well, great, now you know three parts to your essay. Part one, two, three, there's reason one, two, and three. Make sense? So every single one of, every single paragraph in your paper has to go back to proving the thesis statement. Why? Because that is the purpose of your paper. And if you're writing something that doesn't help you accomplish your purpose, why are you doing it? Okay, your conclusion on your essay is related back to the thesis as well. You're gonna kind of summarize all the important things you just said. So everything that went into the body, you kind of say it again, only shorter. And then you remind them of what the thesis statement is. Why? Because the whole point of the paper is to prove that point. So what you're doing is you're basically closing your argument and saying, this is how I made my point. Make sense? You restate the thesis. Now if you've done this, this chicken scratch on the board, ha! You introduced a topic. You said what you were gonna say about it. You explained what you said with your thesis then you summarized your evidence and you reminded them again what your point was. So at every step of the process, it goes back and it makes sense. That is what an outline can do for you. Just imagine how much easier writing the essay will be when you've figured out all this before you start writing. Instead of like, you, you pick up your book and you're like, oh, I think I could write about this. And you just start writing. And then you write a sentence that maybe you really like. But if it doesn't help prove your thesis, which you may or may not know at this point, it doesn't belong. You write an outline to help you write a paper. So, make sense? Yes? No? Hopefully. If you have questions, let me know. If you don't, I guess we're good to go. So, thanks for watching. Bye.